What is going on everyone? Bows Phoenix here and Jesus Christ, I've got one hell of a video for you today. With it being Thursday, this is of course a Warrior's Den recap and we've got a ton of ground to cover. Now, I know it's kind of a huge meme or whatever, but I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do this video in two parts. They covered so much stuff today that if I put everything into one video, I think it'll be overwhelming. That being said, I will aim to get both parts out today because tomorrow, which is Friday the 12th, I have a very special video coming out that involves a collaboration with Ubisoft themselves, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Anyway, enough teasing, let's get into it. So firstly, today's dev stream was pretty much all about Season 2, as you'd expect. We saw the new characters in action, some of the new gear, and we learned that there's a new patch with a bunch of balance changes coming along with all of that. We'll cover the patch in the second video today, which is going to be the dev stream part 2, because there's a ton of stuff coming, and I want to make sure you guys have time to digest what you're about to see in this video before adding everything else in. So first up, some housekeeping and a few things that they mentioned that I think are important. The faction war. Everyone switched sides during the last faction war because Vikings won. This does not guarantee a win. Faction War is determined by people playing well and placing assets manually and tactically. Case in point, the Samurai had the biggest population last season and they still lost. I've said this like three videos now, but I'll say it again. Be careful about jumping on the bandwagon faction. It does not guarantee a victory. Also, with Season 2, there's going to be a few changes to the Faction War in general. The one they showed us, as you can see here, is that new territories are going to be added. From what I remember, those are the little white areas near each faction's flag at each corner of the map. It'll be interesting to see how those play into the Faction War, but for now, we'll just have to wait until next week to see how it all works out. Next up, you should know that there aren't any new outfits or cosmetic content coming this week. This actually isn't a bad thing because it gives you a chance to save up your steel. You're gonna need it in the new season. Now, remember yesterday's video? If you don't, that was one of my tips, so make sure to heed that advice. It's almost like I am omnipotent Baus. But anyway, one last thing they're doing to commemorate the Vikings on the Faction War victory is releasing a Viking bundle that anyone can buy, from what I understand. It's gonna have an ornament and an execution that wasn't available to everyone. Now, I am a little confused on how this is gonna work, but it sounds like you guys will be able to get some of the stuff that the Faction War winners had access to, but maybe with a little bit of RNG, we'll see though, and someone can correct me on that if I'm wrong. And now, finally, enough teasing, for real this time. Let's take a look at what they showed us with the new characters. First up, we've got the training video for the Centurion, which shows us some gameplay of him in action. Now. This isn't live gameplay, but it's the next best thing. From this, we have an idea of what he's going to play like and how his moveset looks. From what we can see here, the Centurion is very aggressive. He's made to get in your face and punish you with charged attacks, unblockables, and massive stamina punish. He keeps the pressure on, he's very mixed up intensive, and he's able to take advantage of knockdown with special ground moves. Now, as Roman stated, you're going to want to keep him at a distance because he is very short range, but if he closes in, you're in trouble. That being said, the Centurion is very much like the Warlord, but with a little bit shorter of a range. Also, as a side note, he does not have a deflect as we previously thought he would. He doesn't really need it though because he's got about 101 ways to open up a fight. Light attacks, kicks, punches, parry counters, he's basically like a Swiss Army knife with a fist. Playing him is going to be very interesting. Taking a look at his moveset here real quick, we can see that he's got a lot of mechanics that work on charging certain attacks for different effects. I think that with this, it'll make Centurion feel very tactile, like you'll have a lot of control over the character and how hard you want to hit for each situation. He's a very nuanced character on paper for sure. Moving on though, let's take a look at the Shinobi. Firstly, you guys will be excited to know that unlike the Centurion, the Shinobi does have a female and male version. This character is not gender locked. As for the playstyle though, the idea was for him to be deadly at long range. This character has a ton of mobility and he's made to duck in and out of fights. Now, I definitely say he earns his moniker as a harasser and it's because of his range and mobility that he's almost the polar opposite to the Centurion. The Shinobi, in my opinion, and in Roman's opinion, is much more technical than the Centurion. Now, make no mistake, that doesn't mean I think that he's better. These are both extremely powerful characters with a lot of potential, but I do think Shinobi will have a higher skill cap. As for some of his special abilities, he's got a double sprint, which is that little Naruto run thing that everyone has been memeing to high heaven, and that allows you 
you to catch runners. As an assassin, he's also got a deflect that will allow for various mix-ups. His biggest flaw, though, is his health pool. With only three and a half bars of health, this puts Shinobi at the lowest health character in the game. This definitely leaves him susceptible to an easy death from some of the harder hitting characters. Now, lastly, He's got the interesting addition of ranged attacks. Now, fear not because these can be countered, and if they are, they pull Shinobi down to the ground and leave him open to an attack. And although, I think learning this character is going to require a lot of technical skill with the game. He's got a ton of mix-up opportunities and a very robust set of attacks and chains, one of which has six fucking inputs. That is insane. But yeah, I mean, the new characters, they look really impressive from what we've seen today, and it's definitely a lot to take in for sure, but there is one more thing I want to show you guys. They previewed some of the new gear coming and holy Jesus it looks fucking good. Here's a few short clips showcasing it as well as some dope Centurion and Shinobi looks, so enjoy. Alright, so those are pretty fucking swell, but that's gonna be it for part one of this little mini-series on the dev stream. In the next video, which is part two, we'll be partaking in everyone's favorite activity, listening to me read patch notes with gameplay in the background. Seriously though, I know it's a huge meme at this point on my channel, but I know you guys appreciate the insight and not having to sift through the notes for the important stuff yourselves, so stay tuned for that. It's coming here in a few hours most likely, and also, before you go, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, get subscribed to the channel if you're new here, and join my Discord using the link in the description below to continue the conversation. Until next time though, I'm Bows Phoenix. I'll see you at the next video, and as always, thank you so much for watching.